Hi, it's Govind Singh 1984, Gav Love 84 Arya, of course, NSP Limited. And um, I want to um, do a blog, blog, a political blog. I'll feel a lot better getting it off my chest so I can move on. But uh, it's playing on my mind, so I'd like to share uh, a bit of wisdom, a bit of history, a bit of knowledge. I'm speaking in an Indian accent, so it is easier to the air for my Indian and Pakistani Facebook friends. So we don't need a lot of translation. So this is uh, this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about World War One in Europe, the Great War in Europe. When you are of a migrant descent and settled in Europe, we are told, especially in Britain, to move on from colonial history. It happened so long ago. Uh, it, people don't like opening old wounds. They like to move on and get on with things, not be reminded about the colonial past. But what they do like talking about in Britain is World War One and World War Two. It is a, a, a topic of uh, discussion amongst the older generations. Maybe not so much the younger youth or the children don't really have any interest in World War One or World War Two. But definitely, you know, there's uh, commemorations and memorial services for the Great War and World War Two that happened so um, eight to ninety years ago. So I just want to talk about the topic. So let's talk about World War One. Now I don't know too much about the initial start to the war. All I, all I know is, um, is it France funded? I don't know how to pronounce his name. I always get his name muddled up. But a duke, the king of Hungary or Austria, one of the two. I think Austria, the king of Austria, he was assassinated by Serbian nationalist. Why I do not know. I need. I should do some more reading before I talk about it. But uh, I just want a quick summary to round things up to make it very easier to understand. Uh, he was assassinated by a Serbian nationalist, and all I know is Europe was dragged into all-out war. There was just war throughout Europe: France, Germany, uh, Eastern Europe, Russia. It just turned into a spiral into the war. So in 1914, the German army, led by the General Erich Ludendorff and General Hindenburg, was had the German army stationed along the Eastern Front in the Balkan and Baltic states. And they were repelling the Russian Tsars, the royalty of Russia, the Russian Tsars, uh, repelling the purges by the royalty of Russia into the Baltic and Balkan states. And they were pushing them back. Um, and they were very successful. General Erich Lutendorf and Hindenburg. Uh, the German army was very successful to the point that towards the end of the war, Lenin in Russia, he signed a decree. He signed Russia's withdrawal from the war. The treaty where Russia withdrawal from the war, meaning they will no longer engage in compact combat, they're going to withdraw from the war. So things are looking good for Germany. But for some reason, uh, that was on the Eastern Front. And on the Western Front from 1914, you had Britain, Zionist Britain, who, who gathered Commonwealth soldiers throughout the Commonwealth, African, India, and China, and got them to uh, attack the Western Front during 1914 to 1918. But towards the end, somehow, uh, uh, Germany's home front, on the home front, people on the home front no longer supported Germany's war effort. They no longer supported German Germany going to war. Now you got to ask yourself why. When Lenin in Russia has signed a treaty to withdraw Russia from the war, victory is not so far away for Germany. Why would you suddenly call for boycott, boycotting Germany's war effort? So this caused a lot of unrest in Germany. People became very angry. Now, Pierre Hardy of the British Labour Party in Great Britain, he was an opponent to the war. He felt Britain should have never gone to war with Germany. And I also agree with Pierre Hardy, right honourable gentleman Pierre Hardy of British Labour Party, that Britain should never have gone to war with Germany. In Scotland, there was a socialist minister called William Crawford Anderson, right honourable William Crawford, Crawford Anderson, who said Germany is Britain's friend, not Britain's enemy. So there were many opponents in Great Britain in 1914, in the beginning of the 19th century, who were opposing Britain going to war with Germany. But the Zionists who were in charge at the time dragged Britain into a war. 
So when German's war effort was no longer receiving support on the home front, Germany had to surrender. Now one of the terms of what Germany had to accept during what the surrendering is they had to cede a lot of territory gained. So when they had gained territory in Eastern Europe and the Balkan states, they had to withdraw and cede that territory. And they had to pay reparations and they had to pay for the damage caused by the war, which made Germany very, very angry because two, two, there's more than one army fighting in this war causing damage. You have Zionist Britain on the Western Front, you have Russian on the Eastern Front, you have Germany. Everybody has to collectively pay for the damage caused by the war. So this is something that caused a lot of unrest. So the war ended in 1918 with Germany surrender and you've got to ask what would make German home front lose support for the war when Russia withdrew for the war in 1918. Now in 1917 towards the end of the war there was the Russian famine where 12 million people died from hunger in Russia. Now people say it was due to the Russian revolution where Alexander Kerensky overthrew the Russian Tsars because the Tsars were very very hated, they're very unpopular, they are very tyrannical and there's so many famines due to the Russian Tsar royal family. So people say it's due to the Tsars, due to the Russian revolution, the Russian provisional government with the Lenin Bolsheviks. Who knows, I need to do more research to understand but this there was a famine in 1917 in Russia. So Germany surrendered in 1980. And so from 1918 to 1932, in 1932, in the Ukraine, the Lenin Bolsheviks, who seized power from the Russian provisional government of Alexander Kerensky in 1918, they made a purge into the Ukraine, into the Eastern Europe, and they stole and looted the agriculture of Eastern Europe, which resulted in at least 10 to 20 million Ukrainians dying in the Holodomor famine in Kiev, the Holodomor famine, where 10 to 20 million people died. This would not have happened if the Western Front in 1914 was not attacked by Zionist Britain and with the Commonwealth soldiers from India and Africa. The reason why it would not have happened if the Western Front was not attacked on the Western Front in 1914 of mainland Europe, then General Erich Ludendorff and General Hindenburg of the German Army could have kept the German Army in the Eastern Front and protected the Ukraine from the Tsar Stalinist or the Bolshevik Russian Communist purges into Eastern Europe, and that's why the Ukrainian famine was avoidable and preventable. And this happened in 1932. So when you go on Google and you research, when did the persecution of the Jews happen in Germany, in Europe? It happened in 1933. It started in 1933. So when Holodomor happens in 1932, where 10 to 20 million people are perishing from avoidable hunger, 1933, one year later, Germany National Socialist Workers' Party has gone absolutely berserk against the whole Jewish identity. They start killing them, they start rounding them up, people start fleeing at the borders. It's absolute gone chaos, carnage and anarchy and it's just gone all crazy. But the Zionists do not want to talk about why. They just say that the Nazis persecuted the Jews, but they never say why did the Nazis just do that for, what did they do it for no reason? They did go crazy because of Holodomor in 1932 and they're angry because that could have been avoided if Germany did, was not made to secede territory and forced to surrender in World War One. That's what made them go berserk. Now do I agree? No, I don't. Because I have, if you were to imagine someone like Noam Chomsky, Bernie Sanders, the cast and crew of the Big Bang Theory, the, the comedy that comes on E4, the, the Jewish writers and the Jewish actors. I am a fan of Jew, some Jewish entertainers and Jewish politicians and Jewish speaks, spokespersons. I would never like to wish to see harm come into the way of someone like beloved, very nice man Noam Chomsky or Bernie Sanders. But ultimately, they have been endangered and they've, they've, if they were to come in harm's way, if someone as nice as them was to come into harm's way, it's because they've been endangered. And what has endangered them is in 1918, people called for people to boycott Germany's war effort on the home front, which resulted in Germany surrendering when the Russians, the Leninists, had signed a treaty to withdraw from the war. What happened in Ukraine in 1932 in regards to the Holodomor famine would not have happened and this has made people go berserk. So you have to look at Zionist Britain and say, how dare you attack the Western Front? How dare you disrupt Germany's operations in Eastern Europe when they were helping Ukraine, they were helping Poland, they were helping the Eastern European Baltic states and Balkan states, and then they attacked, they attacked the backup of the Eastern Europeans. So 
it is uh, i personally the holocaust is very tragic uh, i would try to help the house of solomon jewish socialist association if there's anything i could do as a civilian if i was present at the time wazad hin forge of the the, the warriors of sebastian the boss netaji the free india legion if we were present if we could help the house of solomon jewish socialist association uh, uh, we would try to do our best to help someone who has the mind similar to bernie sanders or noam chomsky we would really try our best to help but you need to understand we need to understand what is made the, the national socialists in europe very very angry and it's the poverty but they don't want to talk about the poverty which resulted as a result of zionist britain attacking the western front now we have to take our minds back in world war 1 1914 to 1918 100000 german jewish soldiers fought for germany's side they fought for the army of general hindenburg and general erich ludendorff they fought for their side during world war 1 to repel the russian tsars and they were on germany's side to fight the marxist leninists in russia so when 100000 german jewish soldiers fight for germany in world war 1 that means 100000 german jewish soldiers house of solomon jewish socialist association association are not the enemy of the german national socialist workers party if the jewish was like what they do in britain they they put refugees from world war 1 they put people who fled the nazi concentration camps in poland who are now settled in in britain and uh, away from harm's way and so they should be they should not be in harm's way i'm glad they're safe in britain but what they try to do to azad hind fuj indians is say that we can't speak the truth about the other side of the story of exactly what happened during those times as well as the colonial atrocities and the looting of india and africa the africans and mexicans were being lynched in the united states of america the south american economy was being procured by zionist uh, capitalist us traders so much is going on at the time but they don't want to talk about what they were doing because our argument is what can general hindenburg what can general erich ludendorff what can the fuhrer adolf hitler participate in around the world can they do the same as the zionist rothschild bankers and loot and exploit india and africa for our resources can they do that because that's what they were doing but they seem to not want to talk about it so we're just talking about the other side of the story and i'm going to uh, end it really quickly when 100000 german jewish soldiers fought for germany in world war 1 the grand great great grandchildren of those soldiers should not be sitting in britain saying the nazis are the baddies the nazis did this the socialists did this what they need to say is if you are a german jewish citizen in 2020 rather than try to justify what happened and make excuses for what happened because remember when the reich collapsed soviet Stalinist Bolshevik Leninist rapists raped to death 80 year old children and 80 year old women as they made their way to Berlin. Their US Zionist and British army raped their way into Germany. They raped women to death. What can these women do? I'm sure there were racists around amongst the women that I don't care about, but what would the what do the women who are left-wing German European women what do they have to do in order not to go through that nasty ordeal? is very bad that that war is not something to make zionist hollywood movies to celebrate that is one of the biggest injustices to ever have happened in europe and it must never happen again and the only way it never happens again is if you don't allow, allow the zionist bankers to meddle and manipulate and maneuver soldiers throughout the commonwealth army to places to go and attack people who are helping other people that's the only way it will be avoided again So what I would advise if I was Azad Hind Fauj sons of Subhash Chandra Bose Netaji of a Free India Legion uh, Aam Aadmi Party Rashtriya Lok Dal Party Bahujan Samaj Party if we could advise a German European Jewish House of Solomon House of Solomon Jewish Socialist Association in 2020 what you say to the Fourth Reich you say to them in World War 1 1914 to 1918 I would fight for Germany I would fight for Germany on the side of Germany to repel the Marxist Leninists in Russia. When people call for the home front to no longer support Germany's war effort, I oppose this. I want the Germany population to support Germany. I do not want them to lose support on the home front. When the the, the Russian Bolsheviks make a purge into the Ukraine in 1932 and loot and exploit the Ukraine of the agriculture which resulted in 10 to 20 million people perishing away from hunger, I oppose this and I understand and recognize this would not have happened if the western front of mainland europe was not attacked by the zionists so i am a supporter 
of the political stance that the National Socialist Workers Party of Europe are taking to att- uh, to uh, address in regards to repelling Russian Tsarists and royalists and uh, in 1914 to 1918 purges and communist purges after that so this is what you need to say in order to be safe because that way you saying I don't agree with the rapes by the communist Russians that happened afterwards I don't agree with the poverty that happened in Ukraine so you are politically on our side so you're not to blame and should not come into harm's way but if you're going to sit there like a zionist and say that's a crack of shit man that's a crack of shit you know you're going to get a slap because people aren't going to stand for uh, their back chat to death threats who are they to make a death threat when they are in the wrong who are they so the right honorable thing to do is step aside and stand down the privately owned rothschilds bank has to be publicly owned by the commonwealth nations and renamed the publicly owned bank of the commonwealth nations london headquarters and had to have representatives in chair board consisting of african india aboriginal australia and first nations canada all the commonwealth nations whose resources and money and labor went into accumulating the wealth that they used to set up the central world banking system in the first place and then that way people can get back to work and i have no problem let me stress with noam chomsky with bernie sanders and the 10000 Jew- the 10000 Jewish rabbis who protested against Zionism in New York recently those are the good guys who I would try to help and that's what I want to say about the matter so be happy no more war i'm not a combatant i am just a geek